What's up guys? So today I got something pretty darn cool in the mail. Um, I got a bunch of old 70s magazines, uh, a ton of these arms gazettes. All right, and then I also got a couple of these American Blade magazines. All right, so first let me read the letter that accompanied these. It says, uh, hey Jeff, enclosed are the uh, magazines I DM'd you about. Uh, hope you enjoy them. I have several copies of what I sent you. If you have any friends who might like some copies as well, have them message me on Instagram. Hit me up if you are ever in Cali. I've got the best bow song collection in Santa Barbara. And that's from Mike, Dirty Boxer, on Instagram. Um, so, you know, watch the video if you see these things. If you're really, really into the hobby and you, you do want these, you can send them a message. But don't send a message just because you want something for free. You know, if you really find value and stuff like this, then, you know, like I said, go ahead. Um, but I'm assuming he's going to get a ton of messages anyway. But first off, Mike, thank you so much. That was extremely uh, nice of you. He stumbled across uh, someone who had a bunch of these, but they had multiple copies of, like, each one. Uh, so he asked if I want to check them out. I said, yeah, sure. Uh, obviously, I mean, you guys know I love guns, but what was really interesting was, of course, the blade ones. All right. I love reference material. Oftentimes when someone's talking about a knife or trying to find a knife, uh, even just for fun. I like looking at old knife magazines. I was a subscriber of Knives Illustrated, uh, Tactical Blade or Blade Magazine, Tactical Knife Magazine. Uh, for numerous years, and I've kept all my old copies, number one, because I paid for them, uh, but also, like I said, occasionally I'll grab an old issue and just flip through it. It is an awesome blast from the past. Now, you know, I don't have or had a ton of knives from the 70s, and, like, this is an issue from April 1978. Uh, I've had this exact trade knife that's on the, uh, the cover here, um, but what's cool is that there's a ton of stuff in here that I have not had before. And just doing a quick flip through on a bunch of these different uh, issues, there's a lot of custom stuff in here. There's a lot of uh, production fixed blades, um, you know, and obviously you see there's uh, plenty of folders as well. So, uh, yeah, let's just take a quick, quick peek through this first, and then we'll get to the uh, gun magazines. So American Blade. It's, uh, here's an ad right in the front for Buddy Hackett's book of poems. Um, let's see. It's funny because I don't know much about Buddy Hackett, but I like Jay Moore, the comic, and he, uh, I think Buddy Hackett's his mentor. He does a lot of impressions to him. Uh, he had a great stand-up years ago where he talked about him. But anyway, uh, look at this. We got an ad for some case knives. Sodbuster. Just so cool seeing this old stuff in here. All right, great, great blades by Hoffritz. All right, we've seen this design here. We have the fold-out fixed blade with that large blade. All right, copied by a lot of companies. There's a uh, sailor's knife or boat knife. You know, kind of slip joints here. Very cool stuff. The case buckle. Look, here's an advertisement for a case belt buckle for $18. That's uh, cool, too. There's a bunch of the different ads. And some of the ads I saw in here are people looking for knives. There's one ad that says, oh, I buy used knives. <laughs> so tell me what you got, you know. Look at this thing. The toggle folder. That looks very interesting. Uh, one of the most complicated and unique folding folders ever made. A must for collectors. Price was $675. Also available, uh, one of the original models with stag scales, only 27 made. Price is $925. Not a $1,000 knife in 1978. So if you happen to have this knife right here, comment down in the... Uh, Comment section below. Oh, here. See, here's another one. Cash for knives. I'm buying berry wood and Colt wood knives uh, in original new condition. <laughs> Contact me here. Kind of cool. I mean, I'm not going to go through each one of these uh, magazines, but I just want to give you a quick, uh, quick glimpse here. Like I said, I like it because I'll go back. I'll read random articles and stuff. And I'll also reference it. But, yeah. Let's check out another random, uh, here's a sharpener, sharpening system, the Knife Maker's Edge. So here's a, a belt sharpener, all right, this is obviously a full-size version of like, let's say, a work sharp that you see today. Look at that, Case Shark Tooth. By the way, I don't know if you guys saw it, uh, Case brought back the Shark Tooth, or at least one of the shark patterns. It is awesome. Someone showed me that, I want to say, I don't know, a month ago, maybe two months ago or something. 
they totally redid it. It's expensive. It's an expensive knife. I forget, I don't know, 150, 200 dollars, something like that. Um, you know, but kind of modern materials, you still have that basic, you know, feel for it. I want to say it might have been a frame lock too. But the Tennessee and Kentucky Copperheads. So yeah, I mean you guys get it. Like I said, I'm not gonna make a really long video. I've actually seen that knife referenced in uh, the Bernard Levine books. Like this one. That exact knife is in uh, Bernard Levine. So I'll come back and I'll read this whole article. That's like, I don't know what they want, 130000 or something. Some ridiculous amount. But yeah, very cool. So, awesome, awesome reference material. I ain't never even heard of this before he mentioned it, American Blade. I know a ton of different, uh, you know, knife companies, or knife magazine publications, but obviously I wasn't around in the 70s, so I didn't know about that one. So, we have uh, Arms Gazette. Actually, we'll put the stack over to the side so you can take a good little peek see in here. This is an April 1975 issue. All right, very cool revolver on the front there. And this is obviously the same deal. All right, this is just gun related, firearms related. And I'm sure there's tons of very cool, interesting articles in here. Also, it's cool to see, uh, you know, reference in prices. You know, if you're into the buy, sell, and uh, trade gun scene, this might be good reference material too. Say, so, hey, you know, this gun sold for X amount of dollars in 1975, 1976. You know, it's just kind of cool. It's nostalgia for some people too. If you're older, you know, maybe you got this publication. Maybe you were 15 years old, you know, and your father or grandfather or mother, or who knows, you know, got this publication. It's just, it's just a cool throwback. I love stuff like this. So yeah, I mean, there's a ton more issues. It's, here's a double of this one, April 76. A ton of these. It's awesome. And some of these feature people on the front too. There's a bunch like this. They actually have articles on those particular people. See, I like long guns. It's kind of like, really, it's the same with knives. I love all guns. I love all knives. I definitely gravitate towards pistols over long guns, and I definitely gravitate towards folders over fixed blades. But I still love it all. Some cool shotguns on there. Yeah, see these? These are all featuring specific people for one reason or another. With all awesome 70s haircuts. <laughs> I thought that was Hannibal Lecter. Quick glance. But yeah, there's a double copy of that. Here's the guy who looks like he does the news or the weather. An awesome 1911 on here. Just very cool. Very cool stuff. So I do want to thank Mike. That was uh, extremely nice of you. Very generous. You know, shipping these out for me to check out. I will definitely thumb through these and go through. And again, in the future, I will reference a bunch of them. Um, you know, keeping the blade ones for sure. Probably going to keep a select amount of the gun ones. And then some of these gun ones I'm going to pass on uh, to some of my buddies who I know are you know, into guns even more than I am. and would really, really love this reference material. So I'm curious, how many people out there keep old magazines, old catalogs, things like that for reference material? Uh, it's a little bit of entertainment for me. Like I said, I'll grab a random issue. Uh, believe it or not, I have a bunch of old High Times <laughs> issues. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, when I was younger, I read High Times. Um, I love staring at the centerfolds and reading the articles about growing and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, don't do it anymore, but I do still grab one. It is nostalgia for me. Once in a blue moon, I'll, I'll go through and read it and kind of laugh to myself. But anyway, I do, you know, collect old magazines. Yes, another collection. A collection of collections. But anyway, so if you do that stuff, let me know down in the comment section so I don't feel so bad for keeping my old junk. Hope you have a wonderful day, and I will see you tomorrow with a brand new video. Take care.